course, um, all the elements um, that are known today are listed on the periodic table. All right, it's the periodic table of the elements. Last unit, when we were looking at um, nuclear chemistry, we focused on, um, you know, just the elemental symbol and the atomic number and the mass number. And we recognized that the atomic number told us how many protons were in the nucleus. All right. Uh, now we're going to start taking a little bit, we're going to make a better use of the periodic table even more this um, unit. What I want you to, to know um, is some common language that we use to describe the periodic table. For example, remember the vertical column is called a group and the horizontal row is called a period. So sometimes we'll refer to a group of elements. We're talking about all those elements that come in the horizontal, excuse me, the vertical um, group. All right. Um, the other thing that's real important for us to notice right now is, um, I don't know why this phone is ringing, but anyway. Um, the other reason, the other thing to notice right now um, from the periodic table, sorry about that, the phone just rang, um, is that I mentioned that most of the elements are metals. And on this periodic table, you can see all of the green um, boxes are considered metals. Um, the blue are considered non-metals. And you see hydrogen falls in the category we consider it as a non-metal. And then the pink are metalloids. And what this means is metals all have similar characteristic properties. Um, they conduct electricity. They conduct heat better and sound. They um, react in certain characteristic ways to form uh, characteristic compounds. They um, are shiny, malleable, ductile. Whereas nonmetals and compounds made of nonmetals tend to be con um, poor conductors, good insulators, um, brittle, not malleable. Um, they can exist as gases, some of them do, um, and they tend to react in certain ways, all right, with metals. All right, so we have these two broad categories. So now we have this way that we're organizing matter and we're getting more and more detailed. We started with mixtures versus pure substances, then pure substances are compounds and elements. Now we're looking at the elements and seeing that the elements are divided even further and described as metals or nonmetals or metalloids that have properties that are in between the metals and the nonmetals. So at this point in time, you ought to be able to look at a periodic table and recognize you know, the metals are to the left, the nonmetals are to the right, upper right hand corner. That's going to be useful um, as we move forward. Something else I need to tell you is these metals down here, um, the B series metals down here, those are called transition metals. Okay, so the, the A series, see 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and down below the stair step, you've got some metals down here in the 3A, 4A, and 5A categories. Those A metals are called representative metals, whereas the B series metals are called transition metals. Okay, and they behave differently. Um, similar, but there's some common characteristics to the transition metals that are not characteristic to the, the representative metals. All right? All right, so I'm going to keep referring back to the periodic table because as we try to understand, you know, the different components in the mixture, such as air, we have to recognize, you know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about elements? Are we talking about compounds? All right, so elements cannot be broken down by chemical means. They are the most uh, fundamental pure substance. It's a collection of atoms that are all have the same atomic number. All right.